day in American history, and I would like to introduce Phil George to say a few words. Good morning. Thank Good morning. You. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another one of the Juneteenths that we've been celebrating this weekend. Uh, and the fact that uh, the state is a federal holiday, uh, Juneteenth fell on Father's Day, which is very auspicious. Uh, give us more chances to do this. I was reading this morning on Ann Reed's history of why we celebrate Juneteenth and history in Texas and so on and so forth. Um, and it's about time that we, although we've celebrated it at home for a long, long time, uh, that everybody begins to celebrate it. And more importantly, that we begin to understand what it really means. That it, it, it sent a message to the citizens of Texas who were newly emancipated and who were not told. But more than that, as Ms. Reed was talking about, it's the legacy of that kind of repression. It's the legacy of that kind of, of, of essentially inhuman treatment that went on for 400 years that we're still trying to unravel. And when we say that we've made progress, Maybe we've made some, but we still have a long way to go. Maybe we have recognized that uh, in some ways, uh, but we are still in the process of trying to make that heal. And it is not an easy process. And it is not an occasional process from Juneteenth. It is an everyday process, and one that, at least here in Highland Park, we have tried to recognize for all of us, for all of our ethnicities, for all of our cultures, for all of the subcultures and the sub-ethnicities in our little demonstration of the world uh, of what we can be. And we still have work to do here, there's no question about that. But we work hard to do it. We hope that Juneteenth makes the rest of our state, our county, our country work harder to do it. And I'll turn it over to Councilwoman Kim Chohan to uh, read an address. Thank you. So you all know the mayor was supposed to be here today. She had another commitment, so she did send a piece. So I'm going to put my own little spin on it <laughs> um, for, for the mayor. So on January 1st, 1863, in the midst of the Civil War, United States President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, sorry, freeing all enslaved people. But as we know, the Emancipation Proclamation didn't end American slavery. With the Civil War still raging, the enslaved people in the South who were liberated by the Emancipation and proclamation became free by force, either by self-liberation or, or from the Union forces. The proclamation's limits became especially clear on June 19, 1865, the day that enslaved people in Texas first learned of it, about two and a half years later after it was issued. But even today, we must question how the proclamation was kept from enslaved Texans for so long. There are many theories as to why there were such a significant delays in delivery of the message of freedom to Texans, particularly the, the difficulty of mail delivery to the state given its, given its location. What is known for certain, however, is how the news was eventually delivered. Today we recognize the date of <coughs> June 19, 1865 as the official end of slavery in America. We celebrate the date of freedom, but let's remember that the true freedom comes when all Americans are, are afforded equal access to education and progress and that it is incumbent on all of us to ensure every American the rights of life, liberty, and opportunity for all. Right, 
thank you everybody. I'll ask uh, all the members of council to come up and give me a hand in raising the flag. It's my great pleasure to invite Pastor Alicia Gray from Trinity United Methodist Church here in Highland Park to speak. Thank you for joining us this morning. Oh, well, good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. I'm looking forward to hopefully getting to meet some of you over time. I've been the pastor of Trinity United Methodist Church for about nine months now, so I'm still getting to know the community, and I'm just feeling very blessed to be here in such a diverse group of people here celebrating such an important day. As we know, this is just the second year that Juneteenth is being recognized as a federal holiday, and in such a short amount of time, it has turned into this beautiful national celebration that touches all communities around the country, regardless of background, age, race, religious beliefs, we've all come together across the country in forums just like this, which really warms my heart and is very encouraging and inspiring. We know that for the past three or four days, there have been parades and special TV programs and concerts and flag raising ceremonies books have been published, t-shirts have been printed, there's been so much energy buzzing around this special day, and people are seeing this as more than just a day off from work or from school, they're seeing it more than just a day to sleep in or to go down to the beach. Instead, so many people are seeing this as a day to pause and reflect and celebrate the end of slavery the end of such a horrific period in our country and to recognize all that has been accomplished in the African-American community since that time. Now, if you were a visitor to this country, you would never know that this is a brand new holiday for us, would you? You would assume that by the amount of attention and the respect that this holiday has garnered that we have been celebrating this for generations and generations. But sadly, that is not the case, is it? I think I'm safe in saying that for the majority of Americans, regardless of our race, Juneteenth was something that we knew very, very little about, and some of us had never even heard about until recently. In fact, a member of my church who moved here from Texas 30 years ago was shocked to discover that nobody knew what she was talking about when she would say, Happy Juneteenth. 
growing up in Texas, of course, she and her family and friends and her community would regularly celebrate this day. But when she came here to the East Coast, she was met with blank stares. And people thought she must be making up this holiday. <laughs> Even my mother, who was born and raised in Mississippi during the Jim Crow era, told me that she had heard very, very little about Juneteenth growing up. It was just not something that people recognized or celebrated. It was not until she got much older that she started to hear people talk about Juneteenth. And as for me, born and raised here in New Jersey, I also cannot really recall hearing much about this holiday, about this day at all, until recently. And it is a shame, isn't it, that such a significant milestone in the history of African Americans and in the history of our entire country would be dismissed and overlooked for so long. Which is perhaps why now there is so much of a push to bring this day to light. Because we know that it was a watershed moment for everybody. Now we know that Juneteenth did not end violence and hatred against black people, nor did it bring an immediate sense of peace with justice for our country, but it was certainly a first step in the direction of freedom for all. I think about my great-great-grandmother, Grandma Lou. She was born into slavery in Mississippi around 1832, and she had several children with her slave master, which means that my great-great-grandfather was a white slave master. I can't even begin to fathom what my grandmother endured on a daily basis, how she was treated, how she felt, what she witnessed on a daily basis, what she was forced to do every single day of her life, the emotional, physical, and spiritual toll that this had on my grandma Lou and on all of my ancestors is far too great for my modern day mind to even try to imagine. Yet in the face of their suffering, they remained resilient and rooted in the truth of who they were, children of God, worthy of love and respect. And they passed that truth on to their children, who then passed it on to their children. And once the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, the doors of opportunity slowly began to open for many of them. Life did not suddenly become easy for them. Racism still existed. Certain mindsets were still deeply, deeply entrenched in many, many people. They remained oppressed and remained mistreated Yet they managed to live lives that were full of purpose and meaning. As freed people, many of them went on to high school and some of them even went to college. I come from a long line of teachers and pastors and business owners. They succeeded in their little communities, ignoring the messages around them that told them that they did not matter and they made something of themselves. And for that reason, I'm here today. I have led a relatively charmed life because of what my ancestors went through. It is because of their hard work, their determination, and their faith that I am who I am today. And without a doubt, I can say that I am my ancestors' wildest dream. You may have heard that expression recently. In fact, I think I have surpassed my ancestors' wildest dream. They could never have imagined the privileges that I have today. Not only to go to an Ivy League college, but to then go on to get three master's degrees, 
to have the freedom and the finances for me to travel and study abroad over the years and the freedom to choose diverse career paths. <coughs> now it's so easy for many of us to think that we got where we are by ourselves, that we just pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps. I can say, well, I did this on my own and I did that on my own. Yet we would be wrong because we would fail to remember, I would fail to remember that I am standing on the shoulders of those who suffered so much, who gave so much of themselves, who lived so sacrificially so that I and so many others could have a better life. Juneteenth highlights this incredible legacy that my ancestors left behind. A legacy that made it possible for my parents to offer my brother and myself so many wonderful opportunities in life. A legacy that made it possible for our country to take a step forward in healing. Juneteenth is a day when we thank God for our freedom. A day when we acknowledge that more work needs to be done to dismantle so many injustices that continue to plague our country. It's a day of reflection, but also a day of action. A day to say we are no longer where we were, but we still have a long, long way to go to be where we should be. So may this Juneteenth and the Juneteenths into the future keep us accountable to do our part as a community to embrace one another in love so that together we can build lasting transformation for our country and for the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Monique Coleman. long time coming freedom 
a freedom that was not given to them. They won it in battle. Indeed, throughout the history of this country, no rights, no liberties have been given to African Americans. They have always been secured through the blood, sweat, and tears of black people themselves with the support of allies. Even with the knowledge of their legal freedom from chattel slavery, the formerly enslaved people in Texas knew that their trials and tribulations due to racial oppression were far from over. Part of the message that was delivered to them was that they should quietly continue to work where they were, even though they were legally free. Some did strategically planning the way out, and others did waste any time and got on out. Like every victory and the long struggle towards justice and freedom for African Americans, Juneteenth celebrations in Texas were met with white backlash and state repression. This forced African Americans to creatively find ways to commemorate Freedom Day. And in the ensuing years of the Great Migration, many African Americans carried Juneteenth with them to other parts of the country. In the nearly 200 years since then, we have gone from state repression to state and federal recognition of this American holiday. While contemporary official Juneteenth commemorations have their place, they should not stand alone. Devoid of deeds that help make tangible the message of liberation and social equity. For even amid joyous Juneteenth celebrations, there are ideological, political, and economic battles against racial oppression that still need to be won. So what can allies of black communities do to meaningfully honor Juneteenth? Get on the battlefield. On the ideological battlefield, there are coordinated, well-funded efforts by right-wing groups across this country to halt racial, gender, and other social justice discussions and policies in our public institutions, especially our schools. Allies can support efforts to ensure young people learn the comprehensive and accurate history of this nation and the foundational and ongoing role of white supremacist ideology and structural racism in our societal institutions. On the political battlefield, there is much work needed to be done to help restore and protect voting rights for black Americans, yes, in 2022, and ensure free and fair elections. Allies can get involved in organizations supporting voting rights and get behind politicians who have an unwavering commitment to civil rights and a racial justice agenda. And we need allies in positions of authority to pass strong policies that address the root causes of racial and social inequality, not policies that criminalize and penalize black people who themselves have limited resources and opportunities. On the economic battlefield, allies can support efforts to address the immense racial wealth gap, which can be traced directly back to slavery and is largely attributed to the policies of our own government throughout the decades. We need allies to learn about and push for passage of House Bill H.R. 40, which would establish a reparations commission. At the state level, here in New Jersey, allies can support the Say the Word reparations campaign led by the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice and demand that the New Jersey state legislator pass the stalled New Jersey reparations bill. These ideological, political, and economic battles are certainly complex and long-standing, but they can be won by multiracial coalitions, multi-generational coalitions of people and organizations with allies of Black people working in solidarity with and following the lead of Black people. At a time when we have many pressing social justice issues to tackle, including climate change, gender violence, health disparities, gun violence, Let's remember that black people are disproportionately impacted by all of these societal problems. Working to root out racist ideology, policies and practices benefits us all. So from the words of the late Bishop Desmond Tutu, my humanity is bound up in yours, for we can only be human together. for coming out again today. Uh, there are some donuts and refreshments to be had, so please help yourself. And I just want to say to Monique and to uh, Pastor Gray, uh, I truly feel blessed to have heard uh, your words this morning. Um, absolutely amazing, amazing um, 
pieces you both wrote for, for today. And I appreciate the time that you took to write them and for joining us this, this morning to, uh, to celebrate Juneteenth. Um, so let's take uh, Monique and Pastor Gray's words to heart and uh, continue moving forward uh, together in support of the, the black community. Because uh, again, nobody's free until we're all free. <laughs>